Hello, Sharks. I'm Jonathan Little here today with another hand from the weekly $10,000 buy-in GG Poker Millions. This tournament is great for making YouTube content because it always is filled with many of the best players in the world, and I'm always excited to see how they play these tricky spots. We are playing at the final table with 20,000, 40,000 blinds with eight players remaining. So there are some payout implications, but at the same time, if you look around the table, there is no obviously short stack. We're playing 20,000, 40,000 blinds. Notice Dario San Martino, world-class player here, has 20 big blinds, and this is the shortest stack. So no one is obviously short stacked. And when no one is obviously short stacked, the game plays about as close to regular poker with no payout implications as it will at any final table. Uh, but if there was a substantially shorter stack at the final table, like a five big blind stack, then you'll see a lot of the medium stacks playing way, 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 way tighter. That said, when the shorter stack is 20 big blinds, it's not like you can just sit there and blind out for a few hands and ladder up if you're a medium stack. So you have to get in there and battle a little bit. Let's take a look at this hand. Two easy folds. Folds around to old fishing. I have no clue who this is. But 10 of clubs is a hand that you would normally consider playing if there were no payout implications or if you were deeper stacked. But in this scenario, Old Fishing has 45 big blinds, which is, you know, a decent stack. But if you look to his left, we have Kyle Burns here with 100 big blinds. This is not the player you want to be opening into. A 20 big blind stack in Dario San Martino, who can easily rip it in with his good hands. Not really what you want either. And then we have Benjamin Roll. Uh, this is Ben CB on the button with a 30 big blind stack. He's going to call appropriately, right? Um, so this is a spot where 10 of clubs is just an easy fold in my mind. You're going to find that at final tables when there are payout implications hands like suited connectors and suited gappers go way down in value and hands containing an ace go way up in value especially in scenarios where the stacks start to get a little bit shallow and someone's kind of likely to shove all in this is a spot where i think a lot of people mess up and raise but it's just a fold let's see if old fishing messes up he does not good over to dario san martino in the cutoff with ace king of hearts this is just an easy minimum raise if he was playing with like ace-queen offsuit, or maybe even ace-king offsuit, perhaps he could justify just shoving all in for 20 big blinds, but uh, that's more of a play you're going to see people make when there is an obviously short stack at the final table, where you just really, really, really don't want to get action. But when Dario is the shortest stack, he should probably just be min-raising most of his good hands. And he does. Ben CB on the button. This is a spot where a lot of people, I think, make the error of just shoving it all in. But I think it's pretty reasonable to call here and see a flop. Uh, you don't really want to 3-bet this and then fold to a shove because King-Queen's pretty great. So I think it's a pretty reasonable spot just to call. And that is what he does. Folds around to Nicholas Astet in the big blind. Jack-10 offsuit. He can call. It's a hand that's too good to fold, really. So he checks. This is Lena on some of the other sites, one of the best tournament players in the world. So he checks flop of 9-4-3. And now Dario has to figure out what he should do with his ace, king of hearts. In this scenario, we can see he has the best hand, but he doesn't know that. So in this scenario, what would you do with the ace, king of hearts playing three ways at the final table? Would you check? Would you bet 100,000? Would you bet 200,000 or would you bet 300,000? I want you to pause the video and write what you would do in the comment section below. All right, did you do it? I hope so. Make sure you go through this active learning process because that is how your skills are gonna improve substantially and quickly. If you like improving your skills quickly, do me a favor, click the like and subscribe button. That way you get more content from me and we continue upping your game on a very, very regular basis. Click like, subscribe, and the notification button so you never miss out on a fun video. This is a spot where I think Ace-King just needs to check fold against a big bet. Maybe you can check call if you if uh, you check and Benjamin roll bets and Nicholas folds, maybe. But this is just not a great board for you. The problem is that when you do have the best hand, what's going to happen is the flop better is just going to continue barreling a lot of the time and bluff you off your hand by the river. So that's not ideal. And when you do not have the best hand, well, your opponent's going to check it down. Like say Ben decides to bet here or something like, I don't know, any any nine, like ace nine, right? If he decides to bet with a nine and the turns, let's say a pretty bad card, like a queen, right? Maybe it just goes check, check then. And then on the river it goes check, check and you lose, right? So when you do have the best hand, 
you usually are going to end up getting bluffed off your hand because you can't just check call down with ace-king on 9-3-2 and then any turn river that's not an ace or a king. And um, so it's a pretty tough spot for the ace-king here. You could put out a small bet, but like you really don't have a whole lot going for your hand. If you bet here and get raised, obviously fold. If you um, bet and get called, I don't think you want to just continue barreling off with the ace-king high in this scenario as a bluff. It's a bad spot. Multi-way, I think it's okay just to get out of the way. Let's see what Dario does. If he is going to bet here, he wants to be betting on the small side, by the way. You don't want to bet 200k or 300k because then you're just losing more money when you do get raised or, or called, right? Over around to Ben on the button. I think betting here is actually quite reasonable. You may say, why would you not bet ace-king, but you would bet with the king-queen? Well, first things first, king-queen has less showdown value than the ace-king, but if you get a king or a queen, you're often good. Obviously, king's no good this time, but it's usually going to be good. Also, Ben has a pretty good backdoor draw, right? Notice he has a backdoor king high flush draw, which is a thing. It counts. And also, he has a backdoor straight draw if it runs off the jack-10. Not that that happens all that often, but, you know, these are turn cards. Like, say a turn card comes a jack or a club. That's going to allow Ben to continue bluffing on a lot of turns. So, you're going to find that even though you don't actually improve to the backdoor flush or the backdoor straight all that often... The fact that you get to continue barreling on a lot of turn and river cards is quite valuable. So I'm not going to say you have to bet here with the king-queen multi-way because, you know, this is gonna, this board is going to connect with Nicholas a decent amount of the time. But I think betting here is at least reasonable. If you are going to bet, you want to bet on the small side as well because when you do get shoved, you want to lose the minimum. Or if you get raised, you want to lose the minimum. You're just going to fold if you bet and get raised. So I think you want to go for a small bet. I'd probably go something like 100K, and that's exactly what Ben does. All right, good. Nicholas has just the overcards and backdoor draw. You can't call in this scenario because Dario San Martino will shove sometimes. And now we have this pretty nasty spot that I talked about on the flop where if you check here and face a small bet, like you could have the best hand, you're getting pretty good odds, but you're going to have a really hard time realizing your equity if your opponent is aggressive, right? And Ben Roll is known to be aggressive. So this is a tough spot where when you do have the best hand, you're going to have a hard time getting to the showdown because he's going to keep bluffing and you're going to fold your ace high. And when you don't have the best hand, when he randomly has, I don't know, like ace three and you bet the flop, he's probably going to check it down and he's going to win. So this is a scenario where I'm not going to say it should fold, but I think folding is actually quite reasonable here, even with the ace king. The battling play is to call. You don't want to raise because if you raise and get called or re-raised, you're in terrible shape. Obviously, we see that would work quite nicely this time, though. Dario does call. Turns the gen card, the ace of clubs. He has almost the nuts. Although, he does lose to all the flushes. Seems like a reasonable spot to check. You may say, why not lead here with the ace king and just pick up the pot? Well, because when you lead and get called, it's usually not going to be all that great for you. You're going to be against a lot of flushes. Obviously, Ben on the button has a decent number of flushes here, right? He also could have hands like ace nine suited, ace four suited, ace three suited. Those are all quite reasonable. He may have small pairs or pocket nines. I think that's reasonable too. Um, so there are a lot of hands you actually lose to here. So even though San Martino has a really good hand now, his hand just went from being pretty weak to quite good, it's a spot where he's, again, not in great shape if all the money goes all in because, well, he's going to be against a lot of hands that beats him. But also at the same time, Ben could be sitting here with a hand exactly like he has. When... Ben does turn the club. I think it's a pretty reasonable spot to keep betting. If San Martino was getting trappy with a hand like Pocket Queens, it just got way worse. If he has a hand like 9-8 suited or King-9 suited, it just got way worse. If he had Pocket 8s, that just got way worse. So I think this is a spot where Ben needs to go for it. It's the only option. Bet the turn, jam the river. Incoming. Do you think it's going to work? <laughs> Whenever you do turn a card like this, you have to realize like you just have to go for it. It's a spot where, yeah, you're running into aces sometimes, but at the same time, you have a lot of flushes in your range and a lot of two pairs and a lot of sets that you want to go for it with. Interesting bet size here. If he bets this size and gets shoved, he has to fold, right? Which is kind of tough, but I, I suppose that's really your only option here. The other alternative would be to just shove your opponent all in, but whenever he does have an ace, he's always going to call, and that's not good for you. When he has a hand like pocket eights, if he has a club, he's probably just going to side call it off. So I don't like a big bet here on the turn. So I think the only play is to bet small. And if you are going to bet, you want to bet an amount that lets you um, bet with like your nut flushes or good flushes, right? That you don't, you don't really care what odds your opponent's getting then. 
Also, you want to give yourself decent odds with your junkie draws. I don't know exactly what junkie draws you even have in this scenario. Maybe like jack of clubs, 10 if you somehow flat it on the button, which you shouldn't do, but if you did it, maybe. Maybe like um, queen jack. Maybe you bet like the jack of clubs here. And then you also want to be betting small with some other good draws too. It's kind of hard to come up with too many bad draws in this spot though, now that I'm thinking about it more. A lot of the draws are pretty high equity. When you're betting in a scenario where your draws are just all pretty high equity and you have a lot of pretty good hands too, you usually don't mind getting money in the pot. Whatever, Bingo's for the small size and I think that's fine. And it should be pretty clear to all of you watching that he's going to be jamming the river. And on basically every river. He gets a club, he's jamming. If he doesn't get a club, he's also jamming. The only rivers that may scare him out here or scare him out of bluffing are going to be an ace, maybe a nine. And that's about it. If he turns, if he wears a king or a queen, he may also not bluff because you're not like trying to get your opponent to fold an ace here, right? So if he gets a king or queen, he's probably going to check it back. Ace or nine, he may decide to give up. He may still just go for it on the nine. Because remember, he bet the flop, right? He could have lots of nines here. So that's probably how it's going to go down. Let's see how it plays out. Should Dario shove the turn? You know, I actually don't hate it. The problem is that when you're beat, you're just always getting called, right? But notice now that he is very clearly the shallow stack to where when you're the shortest stack at the final table, while there are payout implications and value in surviving, you're probably going to be the next one out, right? So maybe you're just supposed to shove here because whenever you are against a flush draw, if you can make it fold, that's fantastic. Perhaps you also caught Ben with a hand like ace queen or ace jack or ace 10 with a club. That, that could be the case. Oh, I think I probably would have shoved it in here. This is something you often see in poker tournaments where I'm not going to say you're like resigned to the fact that whenever you're beat, you just always lose. But the problem is, is that your opponent's bluffs here all should have pretty good equity. If they have pretty good equity that you can make fold because a flush draw does have to fold here to a shove, I think that's probably just the play, especially when you are the obvious shallow stack. Let's see what Dario does, though. By the way, I'm going to presume San Martino knows better than me. These are all absolute world-class players. So do not think I am trying to tell them what to do. I'm telling you what I would do, and I would have done differently here. Rivers of five. I would check call it off. All the draws missed, or at least a lot of the draws missed. I don't presume Ben's going to have too many seven sixes in his range, although, like, he could. I don't presume he has too many, like, ace two in his range, or ace five in his range, because a lot of those are going to check it back. So that means whenever he jams river here, which I fully expect to happen, um, you're either against a flush or two pair, or maybe a set, right? He may not even play like nines or fours or threes this way pre-flop. May not, may not even like play ace nine suited, ace four suited, ace three suited this way pre-flop. You may just like rip them all in for a big shove. So I think this is just a reluctant call off here on the river. Ace king's pretty good. You all know me. I don't go around folding ace king all that often. What do you all do on the river? Take a second. Think about this. Obviously, Ben's going to shove. By the way, if you ever get in Ben's shoes here and you don't shove, you're probably messing up unless you know your opponent is very, very call happy. And to be fair, some people, when they do call the turn here, they have literally an ace or better every time and they're not folding. Against those players, perhaps it's fine to not shove. You may say, why even bet the turn to begin with? Well, because if they don't have an ace, they're going to fold out, right? So you do get turn fold equity, but some people will literally call this river every single time against those players. Maybe you give up, but against the majority of people, you just have to go for it here. So anyway, Ben does make the obvious shove. Over to San Martino. I'd call it off. By the way, when Ben does shove here, I don't think he's trying to get San Martino off of like ace king. I think he's trying to get him off of a weaker ace or a nine or an under pair. Wait, all, and all those hands would be reasonable fold but i don't think ace king can find a fold here at least i wouldn't find a fold here don't try this one on me ben <laughs> san martino's giving it some thought one interesting thing about this is that san martino probably could have a lot of ace kings in his range in this scenario also interestingly enough when ben has the king of clubs notice san martino does not have the ace of clubs x on the flop the check called or the ace with the king of clubs that check called the flop so that means he probably actually doesn't have a whole lot of ace-kings because I would have presumed ace-king of hearts folds sometimes on the flop. So that means you're trying to more so get him off of like ace-queen or worse, which is actually better for Ben, right? Gives him even more of a reason to bet because San Martino's range is going to be even a little bit weaker. Of course, he has the ace-king this time. What's he going to do? Let's fast forward. 
Fast forward, fast forward. He burns a little bit of his time bank. They gave you a lot of time bank on GG, which is good. It's good to have a lot of time bank. But when you think long, you think wrong. And this time, San Martino made the fold. Let's watch it again. Fold. Brutal. Ben rejoices. He collects the pot. And he rode it all the way to a second place finish to perhaps the best tournament player, Nicholas Hastet. Congrats to both of those players. They have been smashing this $10,000 buying tournament recently. Good job, good work. That's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let the people at GG Poker know. Thanks to them for letting me use the hands. Also, click like, click subscribe, click the notification bell, and have a fantastic day. Did you know that subscribing to this YouTube channel will increase your poker win rate by 36%? Go ahead, do it. Actually, that was a bluff. You actually have to watch all the content and apply yourself and work hard and put in volume. Sorry about that.